Hello everyone, my name is Martijn and today I'm going to show you how to make a basic mod file for your mod. So last time we set up our IDE, either Eclipse or IntelliJ IDEA. And today we're going to start with our first bit of code. So that's going to be exciting. Um, if we open up our IDE, in this uh, example I will use IntelliJ. Uh, you can see that on the left hand side you see all that is currently in your working directory. So if we open up SRC main Java and then open Java up and click on the example mod class you can see that this is one of the ways you can make a basic mod file well this is very exciting but we're gonna create our own one so right now i want to get rid of this because that is an example and i want to show you how to do it so there we go that's gone so no example mod anymore um the, so the first thing we need to do is make a a package what is a package a package is basically a folder let's call it that now there is a special way of naming these packages because we use the Maven naming conventions, link in the description if you want to know more. Um, but basically if you have a website, then you can use uh, your website extension, dot website name, orange tutorial, and then either your name or your project name. But if you do not have a website like that, then you want to do either your name or your project name alone. So right now I'm going to create a package called com, because that is my website extension. Then I'm going to create another package within com, called orange tutorial. And then I'm going to create a new package inside orange tutorial, called tutorial orange. Because that is how our project is going to be called. So we got that. Now we can create our first Java class. So this is, you want to give this a name that your mod is basically called as well. The main mod file should be, be clear that it is the main mod file. Um, so if you are, your mod name is, uh, for example, green or a green, green monster, then your n main class should be called that as well. Sorry for the confusion. So give it a, your project name. That will be the best. So tutorial orange. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to delete this, you won't have that, that is for me personal. So there we go. So this is what you should have when you create that first class. Now there are a few things we need to do in order for um, Forge to recognize that this is actually a mod. So above your public class and your class name, you want to type add and then capital M O D. So add mod. And you can easily fix this red thing by clicking Alt Enter on IntelliJ. So then it will import it. And for Eclipse, it is Control Shift and O, I think it was. So then it will import the mod, the, the package that we need. And now we need to give it three more things to, to know about. So first is the mod ID. Second is the name. And the third one is the version. So what you could do is just type your mod, mod ID here, like tutorial orange. Your mod name here. And your version here. This is uh, very, very, yeah, m most people do this. Um, notice that the mod ID sh needs to be identical. So no other mod could have the same mod ID. So make it something that is special for your mod. Um, it should also be all lowercase. But again, this is what most people do, but I don't like it because you hard code some stuff in. So what I want to do is keep all the constants, so things that should not change for your mod, um, keep them in one class together. So I'm going to create, let's actually do that first. I'm going to create a new package called lib, which stands for library. And inside that lib folder, I'm going to create a new class called constants. So in this constants class, we're going to have all the uh, all the values that should not change uh, for your mod. So let's create a public static final string of the mod ID. So that would be tutorial orange. All lowercase again. Orange. Let's also create a pub public static final string uh, mod name that's going to be 
tutorial orange, and let's also call uh, create a public static final string version. And it's going to be 1.0 or anything. So right now, what we could do is call constants dot and I'm mod ID. That should work once we import it. So in, again, on IntelliJ Alt Enter should fix that, and on Eclipse Control Shift O. So also for name, we're gonna uh, call the constants dot mod name, and the version is gonna be constants dot version. So this is just so that I don't hard code some stuff in that I, yeah, I don't like hard coding stuff in. So all the constants are now in that class. So there are, uh, there is one more thing that we need to do before we can uh, make some blocks and stuff. Uh, that is create the loading uh, stages that Forge has. Forge has three loading stages. Uh, let me first type them out and then explain. Um, to tell Forge that you are creating a loading stage, you want to call add event handler. Um, for f Eclipse, it might be a little bit hard. Uh, you might want to type mod.event handler, but IntelliJ does this automatically. So add mod.event handler, public static, sorry, public void pre init. And that takes an FML pre initialization event, and I'm going to call that uh, parameter event. So also mod add mod.event handler public void init. And that takes an FML initialization event. And I'm gonna call mine event again. And the last one is add mod dot event handler public avoid post init FML post initialization event. So what are these three stages? Well, the first stage is for blocks and items and world gen, anything that needs to be loaded very, f yeah, very soon in the loading progress um, that needs to be registered. The init is for events and tile entities and renderers and stuff like that. And the post init is for um, add-ons to other mods. So if you want to have an add-on for another mod, you need to use the post in it. So these are the three stages that we will use um, with Forge. And that's it. This is basically the thing you have to do to have your mod loaded. Now there is one thing you should do as well. If you open up resources and go to mod, mcmod.info, this is the mcmod.info file that holds all the information about your mod. So we might want to change the values in this as well. Now we do have to hard code this in, unfortunately. So only change what you need to change. So uh, within the quotation marks and do not mess with the setup or layout of this file because it will mess up. So in the description, forge tutorial series, uh, the version needs to be uh, like that because our building system will change that and the MC version as well so do not uh, play around with that our website author is is Martin come on puppy uh, the credits are for Martin whoopee and all the viewers and that's it so right now we have done everything that we need to do. So we are going to run Minecraft client to see if our mod is in. Get rid of that notification. So again, if you go to the main menu of Minecraft, there is a button called mods. And if your mod is in, then it should be right there. So we click on mods, and there we go, tutorial orange, there is a mod. Uh, everything that we said about a mod is in, is in right there. Let's... So that's how you create a basic mod and make sure Forge loads your mod. And this, all what I said today uh, in this tutorial is really needed. So make sure you do all of that. Now in the next tutorial, we are actually going to create something. We are going to create a basic block. So that's going to be a very exciting one. 
Um, I hope you liked it and hopefully I'll see you in the block tutorial.